Ever wonder if there's more that you could be doing to grow your business? Well, if you're listening to this podcast, the answer is probably a resounding yes. Now, it is possible, though, that you might be focusing on the wrong problems in your business and perhaps a little too quick to jump on those fast fixes instead of getting to the heart of the issue, to the root cause. So today, I've invited a very special guest onto the show to have a really interesting conversation about what to look out for as your business grows and how to use the five whys process to solve the right problems in your business. Sounds good, right? Let's dive in. Well, hi there. I'm Sarah Glanfield. I'm a business and marketing strategist just for boutique fitness studio owners like you. If you're ready to be inspired and make a bigger impact, you're in the right place. All you need are a few key strategies, the right mindset, and some support along the way. Join me as I share the real life insights that will help you grow a sustainable and profitable studio. This is the Pilates Business Podcast. Welcome back to the Pilates Business Podcast. I'm Saran, and thank you so much for joining me here again today. Today, we are going to be exploring a topic that I'm really excited to talk through today with our guest. And we're going to be talking about how to solve the right problem in your business, because often what we find when we start to explore perhaps opportunities or challenges in um, in your studio business, what we find is presented as the problem is not always um, what is going to bring us to the solution. And today I am joined by Jessica Lackey, who is a wonderful business strategist and operations advisor, who has spent a lot of time thinking about and formulating ways we can think about creating success in our business. Now, she has experience from the corporate leadership and consulting with McKinsey to um, and having had experience um, working with firsthand in the corporate environment, as well as um, a degree from Harvard. Um, She has seen firsthand the impact of that hustle culture and that what happens when you chase that hustle culture and the impact on the bottom line. Um, but her approach is so different to what you might expect that I'm ex- I was so excited to bring her on and share with you because she's combining all of her experience from consulting and into um, how she helps to guide uh, businesses into growing in a way that is sustainable without compromising that well-being that I know that we are all seeking. And that is why we got into this business, right? So welcome, Jessica. I'm so glad you're here. Super excited to be here as well. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. So when um, when I start working with studio owners, and I'm sure when you work with your um, wonderful clients as well, um, what is it that you find um, are the, some of the most common uh uh, sort of presentations, how do people come to you and what are they saying to you that they need help with most of the time, would you say? When they come to me, most of the time, they say one of two things, I need to make more money or I need to have more time. Right. And when they come to me and I ask what more money means, they don't really know. When they say I need more time, they say, I don't really know. And that's where we start with getting clarity on what more time, more money, more freedom really means to people. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really easy to, to avoid answering those questions though, isn't it? Cause it's quite hard. <laughs> the it is quite hard. <laughs> the specifics are very challenging and, um, answering those questions requires us to really slow down and define some of those things that are undefinable for us. It, it means making the goalposts stop for a minute. And, you know, when we're spending time marketing, we're seeing everything on social media, the goalposts never stop there. Mm. Um, These are some pattern interrupt questions to make us say, well, what do I really need? And that's where I usually start with my clients. It's so powerful, right? Because it's very easy to um, overlook how important it is to take the time and dedicate time to 
answering these questions as well because they are often quite uncomfortable. Um, and when you when you give yourself a chance and to take that time and you give your time, give yourself the time to 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 sit down and think about what you really want or what it is that is perhaps holding you back, it's really, really enlightening. So when you have these conversations and you start to drill down, um, what 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 happens next when you're having these conversations with with people that you're working with? Yeah, we start with where they are. So when we say they want more money, they want more clients. Well, how, how much money are you making now? How much money are you taking home now? Those are two very different numbers in your business. How many clients do you have? How many clients do you want to have? And we really say, you know, what's the gap between where you are, where you want to be, and what's the biggest barrier? What's the biggest bottleneck to that growth? Mm -hmm. What tends to happen is that the answer that looks like the service answer is actually not where we start with their um, with bridging that gap and getting, um, getting through those bottlenecks. Right. Right. And so, so what are, <clears throat> where, where does that then take you next? What direction do you tend to go? And what is a typical kind of path that, that, or what, what, what often comes up for people? Yeah. So most people want to move up, up into the right. You know, we want to go growth. I say, we don't move up before we go down. Um, right. I say we go deeper into those questions. Um, when we were doing the pre-podcast conversation, um, I talked about a tool that I bring from my consulting days, my lean um, manufacturing days called the five whys. Mm -hmm. So we ask the question, uh, you want more money or you want more clients? Why? Um, they say, well, I need to bring in this amount of clients and I'm not there yet. We start to ask the next question, why? This is when the paths start to diverge a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, you know, we say we need more clients. Typically the answer is I need to do more marketing. Right. But when we ask, well, the question of why or how one client, one studio owner may say, um, I need more clients. Therefore I must need to do more marketing. How do you know you need more marketing? Well, I don't have enough repeat clients on my books. Well, why is that? They book once, but then they don't come back. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? well, we can't get them in. We don't have enough, we don't have enough open spots mm -hmm. or they can't seem to book again, right? That's not a marketing problem. That is a customer capacity and operations problem or a client, in, you know, a, a client process, retention. retention process. Exactly. Yeah. That's not a marketing problem. That is a putting more at top of funnel. Isn't going to solve the bigger problem, mm -hmm. but yep. then you have a different studio who they are doing social media marketing. They have a lot of followers. You ask the question, well, how do you know you need more clients? Where, you know, why do you think the marketing isn't working? And what it turns out is booking on their site for even the first session is really hard. Right. People have to wait for a month. Um, I had a, I went to a Pilates studio and I couldn't, I had, they had a free week trial and I couldn't use the free week during the free week because there wasn't any spots open. So I couldn't, booked. they were fully booked. So I couldn't go in for the Free week, right. um, even though I wanted to. <laughs> also, <Very common. laughs> oh, really? These, these are all, you know, and these are all, um, you know, it's funny because you're sharing this. You know, this is this is something that comes up often, and it 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 um it, it when you start to drill down into these these questions, it really opens up a lot of other um, opportunities, perhaps, and you start to really be able to discover. Um, where there is perhaps some gaps, right, in the in the business, and sometimes you might find that there's more than one gap. Maybe it's, you know, maybe with the scenario you just mentioned with the with the with your free trial, and you couldn't get in. Well, that's a scheduling problem. That's a top of funnel marketing problem. That's a customer support problem. You know, um, there's a whole bunch of things that sort of opens up that you say, oh, wow, like we should, you know, we should, we should, we should do something about that because that's not really helping a business. Right. So it's, it opens up a lot of different opportunities, which is amazing because I'm always big. I mean, maybe some people look at this right as a, uh, uh, as problems, but we can solve a lot of these and then they become opportunities. So exactly. And this is how we become sustainable in our businesses, because again, the, the, the natural, the natural thing I think we're sold is, well, we need to hustle more. We need to do more activities to get more output, more input to get more output. But really what we're doing is 
in some cases, finding the real problems and the real bottlenecks that are the leaky parts of our systems. And by fixing something once means that we're not having to forever have more activity to get more impact. And I think that's what's interesting about building these sustainable businesses is how do we go deep enough to find the real, the first, there could be many, but the mm -hmm. first bottleneck that says, this is, this is something our growth. How do we fix that and fix the root cause versus spending our time kind of grinding in the, the hamster wheel of just more activity. Right. And the, ta and the, ta yeah. And the activities and the tactics, you know, it's, it, you know, and, and that's where I think it's, it's it, when you're looking around and you're not, like you said, slowing down and reflecting on your business, it's very easy to look around and see perhaps what other people are doing and then saying, oh, that must be why my business is struggling or fumbling or why I'm, why I feel stressed or why I feel overwhelmed. It's because I'm not doing that, that that studio is doing or that that studio owner is doing. And then we start spinning by copying other people without really thinking about whether or not it is aligned or a fit for our businesses or, or for that, for our particular studio. Um, and so you kind of spin in these tactics and which actually is way more exhausting than slowing down, reflecting on those kind of deeper layers and then kind of thinking through what more strategically, what the kind of root cause is, right? Yeah. And this gets back to you know where we started with, we don't really know the back end of that other studio's business. We don't know how many how many um, other people they have in their business, what kind of office staff, what their rent is, if they're um, physical locations. We don't know those things. We just see the output of I'm on social media. They're sending emails. We, we don't know the why behind they're doing that. Like, are they profitable? You know, we, we don't really have any idea, but that's why we go back to what are your goals? What is your current state? What is your financial reality? What do you need to bring home from this business? And that's where we then can say the bottlenecks to close um, the deeper work to close to someone else's vision may be very different than the the work needed to close to your vision. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where not only do we have to go deeper into our the the elements like the five wise question, go five layers below the surface level um, the surface level symptom, but also get really clear on the vision we have for our businesses ourselves, so that we're not not just solving the wrong problem in our business, but we're actually solving like the wrong problem overall in our, in our businesses, you know, we could be trying to scale up, add more locations, add more people. And then you're like, I actually don't really want to do that. So by solving that surface level problem in the first place is actually taking me off course for the type of business I really want to run. Oh, absolutely. Couldn't, I could not agree with you more. And I think it's really hard to, um, filter often out some of those external kind of inputs that we are bombarded with every single day um, and really filter through, is this the right thing for my business? And if you don't have a really clear picture of what you want for your business, then you don't have really that filter to put it through because you're not sure what you're filtering for. You know, just um, earlier this week, I was talking to a studio owner who was think who had had the opportunity to add a second location to her very successful business. Um, and we were looking through the data and the numbers and it looked great. And she said, I guess I just need to decide if this is what I really want. Right. And it wasn't, it was just, you know, we, we, if we had ignored that question, you know, completely, she may have found herself kind of going with the momentum of this decision. Um, but it was very smart to be thoughtful about, you know, is this what she really wants? What's her vision, not just for today? And like, isn't this an exciting opportunity? Yes, it is. But, you know, two years from now, three years from now, is this aligning with the vision that she has for her life and her business? Um, and that's, you know, I think that it's, it's often, I think we, we find ourselves avoiding those sorts of kind of conversations with ourselves. Right. So again, slowing down is helpful. Yeah. Those discontinuity points where you're adding additional practitioners, opening a second location, what isn't commonly acknowledged in the discourse is that fundamentally changes your business model. It changes your profit structure. It changes the roles and responsibilities in your organization. Like who's going to cover different locations, and it, a lot of times the the top line revenue is celebrated, the growth is celebrated, but it's a fundamentally different business. And again, mm -hmm. this is where I think the power of having 
other people you can talk to, to help you sort through the decisions and really look at the pros, the cons, the trade-offs, um, at, particularly at these points of bringing on employees, bringing on um, additional um, practitioners, second location, a different product stream. These are all fundamentally changing different parts of your business. Um, that's not typically acknowledged in the kind of the seek for growth. Mm, agreed. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree. You know, it's very, very easy to celebrate those big, you know, we see it every day of the week on, you know, if you look at any sort of a business um, and marketing um, posts on, on Instagram who, you know, it's the big numbers. It's the how many 10 X, how many X the business and how many time. And it was overnight and I made $10 million, you know, and it's like, yeah, but there's, that's not maybe what everybody wants. Right. It might not be what, you know, it's very easy to get swept up with that. And, um, it's not always what everybody wants, but I will also go back to what you said before, which I think is really, um, another kind of important component that we kind of skipped over, but I don't want to ignore, which is that even when we look around and we kind of have, um, an idea of where we want to go, you know, we are surrounded by these kind of this bombardment of, of inputs. Right. And, um, when we see what other folks are doing, we we kind of tend to make these associations with that. Um, and often that means that we're seeing someone in a more positive light for some reason, maybe, than they actually are. And the studios that um, may be struggling the most may look like on the outside, like they are the most successful. Um, but you know, it, I have to say, having worked with hundreds of studio owners and seeing the back end of their businesses and seeing their numbers, it really, really, really is not always the case at all, which again, lends to, we need to stay really focused on what it is that, you know, you want for your business and what we want for your business. And then when you kind of get clear on that is peeling back the layer of the onions to figure out, okay, what's holding you back from getting to the place where you want to go. And so tell me a little bit more about, you know, how or why this kind of five wise process works so well. What is it do you think that is the, is kind of keeps it, makes it such a, such a great kind of concept to use in the business? Yeah. The reason why I think it works so well is two things. One, it's questions are a pattern interrupt and we're not allowed to solution until we're at five wise down. So it requires us to really go deeper and ask the questions that in our fast paced society, we don't really um, ask, um, but usually it's done. You can do it with yourself, but a lot of times it's done with a person that's outside who is thinking about, um, you know, coming into the perspective with what are all of the options that are available to us at each Y step and then asking critical questions as we go down. So, um, you know, I always like to start with the, um, you know, I want to make more money. Um, question. Well, there's always, there's two avenues just right off that first why. Do I need to get more top line or spend less? And then each of those, I need to make more top line revenue is do I need to attract more clients, keep more clients, renew more clients, right? Each level down is, you know, a path forward. And by having someone who's a trained practitioner help you guide through that, one, it's going to keep you from solutioning too fast, but mm -hmm. two, it's going to open up the doors of possibility to, um, really expanding the kind of options available to think about versus it's so easy to like stop at the first one and just be like the solution for the symptom is this. But if you, if you take the time to ask five whys, you're going to really see, oh, the problem is here. And it's almost always something that's not sexy, something that you've been avoiding something where it's outside of your skill set to do, which is why you don't naturally go there. Yeah. Um, and when you kind of sit down and, and acknowledge it all the way at the bottom, you're like, okay, I can't ignore this thing that I've been ignoring for a really long time. Cause it's outside of my, like y'all got into business to lead Pilates, not set up, you know, customer relationship management systems. Like that's not, I'm assuming why you do what you do. Um, and it's probably a lot of times you find the things you duct taped over time. Yeah. And you say, okay, I could keep trying to hustle or I could solve the problem and, and then call in an expert to help me solve this problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. And what do you find sort of, do you, is there like a, a typical kind of, um, place that you get to where there is sort of a, is there a particular, um, 
kind of point in which you kind of feel like that, that or, or I would say, what's the best way of saying this? Is there a skill or a problem that you kind of come across that is often the crux of the problem ultimately that is similar across many businesses, or is it very unique and specific to each business? Do you find? I think it's very unique and specific to each business. I think it's, it falls along the general customer journey of mm-hmm. um, attract, invite, onboard, deliver, um, and then um, offboard and then team management. Mm-hmm. Those are the the foundational business blocks. But for your particular business, I don't know which one of those are going to lead to the, it's the the bottleneck in your business. We don't know um, because some people could, again, have very strong marketing, but really poor billing systems mm-hmm. or, you know, they actually, their top line looks great. But the reason that they are running around like a crazy person is because their back office people are, you know, it's a, it's a people challenge where um, tasks aren't getting done, even though the marketing is, is working really well. Mm-hmm. So it's, I would say there's a not, you know, not infinite number of problems, but for your business, um, I don't usually know where it is, especially when you're smaller, it's usually marketing and sales. But when right. you start to become more known and fill your roster, that's when it's more interesting for me as a, as a expert to say, okay, cool. You've got the basics down now what? And that's all dependent on you and your gifts and like where you like to spend your time and where you like to play and, um, the network you came from before. So the beginning, it's always marketing and sales, but once you start to build a res- consistent client base, that's when it's spans across all those functions. Right. And because that's when, you know, you've got to, you set you, you, you've met the, the viable, the viability of the business. And, you know, in my experience, that is also when often you kind of start to reach the limits of what you can figure out on your own, you know, and, and there is a ceiling often and and everyone's got a different kind of point in which they kind of reach that bottleneck, you know, and, and years ago I worked with a, with a really wonderful studio owner in London who loved to teach and she was so passionate about what she did and she built a phenomenal business um with multiple locations and she you know she turned to me and she was she said to me look she goes I know I'm the bottleneck in the business I know that I don't have the skills to get it to the next level today but I know that I need to to do that and I think having that awareness for your own ability is really incredibly powerful for your business growth because we all hit our limits at some point in terms of our ability to grow on our own professionally, which is why, you know, in the Pilates and yoga and, and, you know, fitness world, we do so much continuing education because we know that in order to become a better teacher, we need to keep learning and keep growing and keep um, expanding our knowledge and expertise but often when it comes to business, we just sort of expect that it's like something we can figure out, you know, but it's not always the case. And um, again, it, or often, like you said, it comes back to, you know, your background and what you've been exposed to and your circles and network and so on. And, um, you know, I think it's it's it, having the awareness and knowing what you're, like you said, what you're good at, but then perhaps bumping up, you're bumping up against the limits and that's exposing where you might need to spend some more time. Right. And I'll say often is, um, I will, you know, having worked with studio owners all over the world, I think that people management is often one of the places that people struggle, um, uh, often, um, and then also thinking and looking and at, um, sort of setting goals and targets from a numbers perspective, um, is also one of those kind of areas, the core areas where it's sort of like, Ooh, Maybe we need to just get a bit more comfortable here. Maybe we need to just go through some of the basics. Maybe we just need to spend some time thinking about what's going on right here and with this part of business. Yeah, I, I tend to find that with a lot of my creative clients, a lot of my uh, practitioners um, that work with the body, that they didn't learn management skills. By the way, people think that you learn this in business school. You don't. No, like, don't. this is you don't. You don't. Um, not like how to run a small business, how to actually provide feedback and delegate, how to set targets that are not like super no. generic corporate targets. No one teaches that. And so no. um, I say this to my clients all the time, like, don't feel like you needed to go to business school for this, but recognize that there's some people who love projects and love goal setting and love taking big visions and breaking it down to tasks. Those are usually not the same people who are gifted Pilates teachers. Mm. Um, you know, we, 
we, you know, those are, we have, everyone has their different zones of genius. And I think there's, um, these are just things that are not taught in, you know, our, usually our professional education and are probably not, are not at all taught in any kind of like, um, training for your specific profession. Like they're just you known, you know, probably in Pilates certifications, you get like a class on like how to run your business and that's it. Mm, if maybe that, not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> But you're right. It's it's not any business, you know, and a lot of business owners figure it out on their own, which means, you know, which is why, what is the stat? I think it's like 50% of businesses fail within the first five years. It's like, this so it is, you know, this is why, because there isn't a lot of business education for small businesses. And, um, but I, what I do think there is now, which I think is very lucky for everybody who is out there right now, starting and building and growing and scaling a business is that there is a lot of folks out there who are able to give guidance and support and strategic advice who, um, can help you to avoid, um, making some mistakes and perhaps help you to tap into more of what you want, whether that is more revenue or more freedom or just perhaps even just to take time off whenever you want, right? I think we all want to be able to take some time off and build that <laughs> indoor schedules. And that's part, you know, again, those are part of like, what do you want for your life? And what do you want for your business? And it all comes back to that very beginning question. Right. And there's no wrong answer to that. No, not at no, all. No. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for coming and sharing your amazing wisdom with us today. I really appreciate it. I'm really I'm excited that we got to talk through the five wise process. And I hope that all of our lovely listeners will perhaps think about using that on themselves at some point or perhaps um, using it um, as they go about building and growing their studio businesses. But if they want to get in touch with you, what is the best place for them to find you? They can find me at jessicalackey.com backslash welcome. This is where I have my weekly newsletter and I teach a free business building class once a month. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm going to link to all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much again, Jessica, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I hope this was helpful to you as you go about building your boutique fitness studio business. If you loved what you heard today, I'd be so appreciative if you could take a quick minute go to wherever the, you're listening to this and rate and review this podcast. It would mean a ton to me. And it would also help make sure this podcast gets out into our community so that more teachers and studio owners just like you can feel encouraged and supported on their journey in our industry.